Hi folks, today we're gonna to be stripping down the engine of the Reliant Regal. Keep watching. Right, well, we're gonna get the engine stripped down and I found out a bit more information on this engine which I've got. I initially said in the last video that it was a 700cc by the information of the engine number, but uh, that proved to be wrong. It is now definitely a 750cc, and let me show you the number and show you for why. Right, so as we showed in the last video, we've got a three segment number here. The first part here, the second part, and the third part. E is for May, and the four is 1974. And then we got the 8. On the pre-1975 model, the 8 denote a 750cc. And later on, after 1975, they had two digits there, which would be an 8 and a 5. And that would denote an 850cc. So if it had a number 8 in a 1974, that means it's a 750cc. And one other identifier to prove this wasn't a 700cc was the actual diameter of the, the liners themselves. On the 600cc and the 700cc, they was a lot thicker uh, than what they are here. The 750s and the 850s had considerably thinner liners as we can see here. And you'd only know that if you see the diameter which I'm, I actually measured there and it actually measured for the 750 and 850, which have both got the same diameter, I think, but on the 850, the uh, stroke is a bit longer. Now also the prop shaft is uh, something else which I'm gonna have to service as well. It's got a universal joint on either end. This one, as you can see, this one is free, but um, I will change it anyway. And this one, as you can see, this one has seized up. And uh, obviously that's gonna need replacing. They're not all that dear, so I'm gonna do the whole lot and obviously give the whole lot of sandblast as well. So something else I've got to refurbish is all the wiring, including these clocks, as you can see. The back panel will probably come off and I'll sandblast that and put this all back together and give it a good clean up. And obviously the, the wiring loom where you've got these connectors, as you can see. And to be honest with you, they actually look in pretty good condition inside. You can still see the uh, the terminals are nice and shiny, so I'm pretty happy with that. Although there will probably be some on here which need refurbishment. And if that's the case, I'll just cut them off and replace them. So, I mean, you might be able to confirm this. I think this is the voltage regulator, and you only really need this if you've got a dynamo. I'm planning to convert this to uh, an alternator, so I don't think you actually need this item. So those of you who have actually done this conversion, if you can just confirm to me that that is the case, I won't probably be needing this. And I don't know what you do, whether you just leave it out of circuit or what, I'm not too sure. So leave a comment in the comment section if you know how to uh, convert these and actually do away with this. And also, like things like switches, for example. I mean, these are the, uh, the, the, the dashboard switches and the chances are they'll probably be all right, but I mean, if they do need replacing, then I think they're easily and readily available. And things like the um, the flasher relay, for example. I mean, this they're only cheap anyway, so I might as well replace that uh, without any hassle whatsoever. Also, I've received in the post this bracket, and this is what I needed for the gearbox uh, to be mounted to uh, the Reliant Regal chassis. This is a Robin engine, don't forget, with the later gearbox and I apparently needed this bracket because the 600 and 700 engine has only got a single engine mount as opposed to this one which is for the 750 and 850 which as you can see there will have two mounts so there should be another rubber on that one coming up so thank you whoever sent me that there was no note with it so I haven't got a clue who it was so that is a real bonus for me because that means I haven't got, got to go hand hunting for one so okay so we're going to strip this engine down now we're going to do a lot of this on time lapse and I'll do a bit of voiceover for you so I'll see you in a minute
Right, so while we're here, we might as well take this old uh, oil filter off. I've got one of these chain tools to obviously undo it. You can get big spanners and all that, but I find this does the job perfectly. So best just to undo this and let's get rid of it. Don't know the last time it's been changed. I don't know the history of this vehicle whatsoever or this engine. So uh, normally you get oil come out of there. So uh, there's no oil dripping out. So I'm pretty lucky there. Maybe the engine's been tipped up. So next I think I'll tackle this timing chain and that involves me undoing these little lock tabs here as you can see and I'm not worried about setting the timing at this uh, stage of the game because everything's coming out the camshaft and the crankshaft so all I'm going to do is just literally take everything apart and when the time comes everything will be lined back up again on the uh, timing chain. I will inspect these uh, teeth on the sprocket just to make sure there's no wear on them. I can't see any wear on them. And even though I don't know the mileage of this engine, the, uh, the the chain seems to be in good order. I'm not too sure whether I'm going to replace this yet, as I say, because um, I don't know how dear they are, but I'll have a look at the prices on eBay. So, yeah, just get the old windy gun out. That's the simplest way to do this. Normally, you have to lock these up, you see, to undo bolts, especially when they're attached to camshafts and stuff like that. But the old air gun does a great job at undoing nuts like this. So I'm just going to wiggle the sprocket off now, hopefully drop it over the chain. And as you can see there, it comes off nice and easy. There is a mark on the uh, the sprocket, so you know where to line it up with when you come to put these back on. As you can probably see there, there's a little mark there underneath that grease there, as you can probably see. These are the two bolts I have to undo here to release the camshaft, sorry. And uh, that frees up this little sea washer, as you can probably see, which is a lot of locating pin on the end of the crank, uh, the camshaft. So I've just taken that out there and I'll put that somewhere safe. And now I can undo this front bracket here for the front of the engine uh, adapter plate or whatever it is. I'll just undo these screws and just give it a little bit of persuasion there. I think it's sitting on a couple of dowels as well. So just uh, be aware that where the dowels are located on this when you take this plate off. Right, now these are the uh, buckets which sit in there for the bottom of the uh, push rod sit into them. In the manual, it shows you that you can withdraw them with your finger, but <laughs> in reality, that's not the case, as you can probably see there, I'm struggling. I did manage to get two out, but uh, the rest, as you can see later on, we'll, we, we've got to tap them out from the, uh, the inside of the engine. They just won't come out at all. I did try quite a few different methods, but uh, one of them, or one or two of them, were really sticking, and you'll see that a little bit later on. So, I mean, I do try with a pair of uh, pointed nose pliers there to try and get these up. I don't want to damage these in any way. So, and one thing you've got to do, you've got to make sure you put these back in the right order because they do wear in a certain way, depending on the cam lobe they're actually uh, coming from. So, you don't want to mix these up. But as you can see, I've, I'm having no joy there whatsoever. So, it will be a, a job from tapping them out from the inside when I take the sump off and get the cam out. Right, so I want to turn the engine over. I'm going to, have to obviously get the sump off next because I want to get inside this engine. So um, that's the reason why I have to drain the engine out, the engine oil out. There will be some residue on the floor there, but I'm not really too worried about that because I've got a container underneath there and a, a rag sitting on the floor. I'm going to just try and wedge this up correctly. I'm going to have to get a logger, uh, a piece of wood there to just put underneath there just to support it. Right, so now it's time to zip that old sump off. Filthy underneath here, this is all going to have to be clean, that's what I couldn't get to before, so uh, you'll have to just stick with me while I undo all, all these nuts, there's loads of them under here, and there's also little collars that uh, go underneath the nuts, and, or bolts rather, so be sure you don't lose them. Right, now this is the first time this sump's probably been off for 50 years, and you and me are going to be the first ones to look inside it. Here we go. There we go, and look at the state of that. All that slime in the bottom of that, so that's all gonna have to be cleaned out. Not a pretty sight. And here we go, here we got the um, the oil pump in the bottom there that's held on by two bolts. This is the oil strainer, this will all get cleaned up properly, so don't worry about that. 
and as you can see everything looks alright there there's the uh, crankshaft there and obviously the camshaft in the bottom there as well all got to come out and the, the carriers they got two bolts which sit there two bolts underneath there and obviously two bolts in the middle those are the main bearing that we've got to take off to uh, obviously withdraw the cam and there's obviously these two bolts there that take uh, got to bring the oil pump out as well and there's the cam that will probably pull out as well but there might be some work needed for that right okay so I've taken the oil pump off at the moment and I'm just releasing this gasket off of the uh, base there and I need to remove this gasket for the simple reason being before I take the crank off if I show you just underneath the gasket is two screws which I have to undo to relieve the end caps there so that I can actually undo the bolts that re uh, retain the crank they're either in there and they're cross-head screws which is very strange to be honest with you so I don't know how tight these are going to be but uh, I've got a big cross-head screwdriver there oh, there we go well oh, that was tight there's one that's the idea you need a really good fitting screwdriver in there so just be prepared just shocking the threads enough so hopefully get good purchase on them keeping the good downward pressure there we go well how about that see so I would definitely suggest having an impact driver there one of the ones you hammer and it turns its uh, anti-clockwise as you uh, apply pressure very easy I would imagine to round them off so just be aware of them and then what that does then is allow us to um, remove this cross member here I think it's dialed on I'm not sure there we go There we go and that then as you can probably see gives us full access to our crankshaft bearings so I'm just going to put them screws back in there well in fact I'll leave them back in there actually mm. right okay that's them end caps now off and I can now start to undo these are 9 16 bolts and they shouldn't be too bad to be honest with you so I'm just going to do with that being locked in position but it isn't <coughs> get my leg up there look oh that's tight right okay I'll get the uh, longer lever on it with the uh, breaker bar that give me a bit more lever I think There we go. Just needed a bit more leverage on it. That's one there. There we go. Like that. And three. That's, that's all the carrier nuts now loosened. I can now wedge that hinging up again. And uh, now I can undo them with the normal bar. And one thing I've also got to make sure of is that um, these carrier bearing carriers go back the right way around and in the right order. So that's just something which you've got to be aware of and all because each of the bearings surfaces wear at different rates and different ways. So just be aware that you mark everything and put everything back in its correct location. Now I'm just going to get the worktop ready because I'm going to lay this down because everything's going to come out in one go here the pistons and everything so I'm just going to get everything ready and as you can see this time I've actually put my gloves on <laughs> inside of engines are notoriously greasy and dirty and it takes ages to get this off here 
In fact, they're actually marked. They've got an F for front, C for centre, and R for rear. So the bearing caps are actually marked which way they go back in, which is nice. I didn't know that. Just seen that now. But what I will notice is that um, facing the oil filter, well, I think they can only go in one way, can they? The letters face the oil filter. So if you're standing where the oil filter is, the letters should be readable towards you. So that's good. And looking at these bearings, they look very, very good. So I'm just going to put these up here. Just lift them up. Everything is just so slippery. Yep, centre one looks fine as well. And the rear one. There's always one that's tight in there. If I lift up the bearing. I think it's just a blinking oil seal. Typical, isn't it? a little tap there we go just get this cover off this one's a bit stickier there we go that's the rear bearing cover Now, the crank hopefully will lift out with the pistons connected with them still. I don't know how tight it's going to be, mind you, but don't forget I'm using a copper hammer here, so there should be no damage done. All I've got though is the bores are full of blinking oil. Right, okay. There we go, let's lift that little baby out. So now hopefully, all I should have is the camshaft, which should pull straight out. I must remember them followers are underneath it still, so just gotta be careful of that. Right, now apparently to get the camshaft out, you have to drift out this little pin here. Probably gonna be easier said than done. There we go. So there's a little pin there which has to come out and then apparently we can withdraw that then, I don't know how, but you've now got to drive the shaft upwards apparently. So I might have to turn the engine on its side for that. Right, well before I do take them out, I'm just going to take these bearing carriers out and put them in their right order. Now push the shaft out. Through the bottom, and this now should hopefully push all the way through. And come out the bottom. So once you've got that off, you then hopefully should be able to withdraw the camshaft out of the block just like that and there it is there right and that's it so this has all got to be cleaned up now the only thing i've got to take out are the the cam followers them little bucket things as i said i can just push them through now and get them out from the bottom end 
so I mean you probably can't see in there at the moment but there's them there's them followers in there look and they're some of them they can't even move they're really sticky so that would be an issue when we were starting the car up basically that one's come up at the end there look but once they're all clean that'll all they'll all move in and out nicely but so that's the reason why you've really got to strip these things down and take them apart because that one there the second one in there is actually seized in there and I can't actually move it and same with uh, one further down the line here. anyway I'm gonna leave it there for now because stripping down engines like this is a really really dirty job and as I say, I could really do with a parts washer here uh, so I can clean all these things up properly before we examine them. Anyway, I'm going to leave this video here now. Uh, you haven't got to see me cleaning up. That's only boring stuff at the end of the day. And don't forget, if you like my videos, do share about and do actually comment down below. We like to see your comments. And do check out my other channel, Retro Hacks, as well, where we do some cooking, me and Sharon. All retro stuff, and we have a bit of a laugh or joke on there as well. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell next to the subscribe button. And that means that every time I upload a video, you're the first to know and you get notified. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next video and until then, bye for now.